Assemblyman Vito Lopez, the man you see there, he is accused of sexual harassment. In order to sweep it under the rug here, it has been said that Assembly Speaker Shelley Silver agreed to pay Lopez's accusers upwards of $100,000 in taxpayer dollars to make it go away. Lopez allegedly groped several young female staffers, made inappropriate attire requests of his female employees. Only weeks after the initial settlement was approved, he allegedly groped two more women. Both Lopez and Silver have vowed to remain in Albany. Now, it should be said, Shelley Silver has called for, among just about every elected official you can think of, the immediate resignation of Vito Lopez, who is not going quietly into the good night. But Despite an investigation by the ethics panel and increased calls for their resignations, both men are still there. And while I do not connote the two in any way, there are different reasons why people say both are part of the problem, not the solution in Albany. Now, among the voices calling for Silver's resignation is our guest Jeannie Zeno, who recently penned a column for the Journal News in her op-ed. She compares Assembly Speaker Shelley Silver to Joe Paterno, and I'll quote here directly. Like the officials at Penn State, Silver was made aware of allegations of sexual harassment and assault by Lopez. Instead of coming forward, however, he authorized secret payments to settle the claims. Just like the officials at Penn State, Silver acted out of fear of negative publicity. It is a moral monstrosity for the people in charge of our public institutions to be more interested in protecting their brand and positions of power than protecting potential victims of sexual abuse and assault. Jeannie, I read a nice little caption there, but why do you think, if he wasn't the abuser, do you think he was the enabler? Well, listen, we have somebody in charge of a very important public institution who was made aware of allegations of sexual harassment and sexual assault of a very serious nature, and you quoted some of what allegedly had occurred. Instead of reporting those to the commission, he allowed for secret payments using public money to the victims. That's he not has true. He has since said, it is true, no, $103,000, yes the it is. He has since assault, said that that was to protect the victims. The allegations and while, well, can I finish, Richard? Can I finish, after Richard? The settlement. Can, Not can, if you're going to say it, things that aren't well, true. Well, that is true. And instead of reporting it, he allowed the payments and he said it was to allow the victims to go on with their life, which I can appreciate and actually understand. My problem is what you mentioned after. People were assaulted after. That is the same thing that happened at Penn State and happens often when people in positions of power in an institution do not make allegations of assault and abuse known. What? We can no when longer, it, we can no longer allow made, that to happen. The first thing that happened was that Shelley made those charges known to the committee which censured him and removed him as chairman of the committee he had. The, alleg the settlement allegations were not allegations of assault. When you move the two together, you do something fundamentally dishonest. There's criticism to be had here, and there are issues to be solved, but the notion that he buried assault allegations like Joe Paterno did is factually untrue and regrettable when it's propagated. Well, that is not what occurred. What occurred is those allegations were made. You're absolutely right. The committee s removed him or, or suggested he should be removed, and he was removed from the committee. I'm not talking about the fate of Vito Lopez. That is a distinct issue. What I'm talking about is the way in which our leaders in Albany continue to allow these types of things to occur. Shelley Silver should be held accountable for allowing this to occur when he oversees this institution. As soon and that as those what allegations happens. were made known of assault. Uh, he brought them to the attention of the body charged under the rules with making the decision, and they did. If the, you're, if you're going to ask you he this, didn't though, bury Silver, anything Richard, dealing with an assault. Shelly Silver has himself acknowledged that he wished he handled it differently. What should he have done differently? When the first allegations came up, which had nothing to do with assault, he 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 decided to, in his words, protect the victims. That was not well thought through. There's a genuine need for public disclosure of these things. And it, it shouldn't have happened. And he said that. But what, what these debates have turned into is the notion that comparison to Joe Paterno is offensive on every level. No, because you know when offensive. there was an assault, 
He took immediate and swift action. You know what's offensive? That we have a state speaker, the leader of the state assembly, who's allowing, you're gonna, you're gonna like say that there's a difference between harassment and assault. There absolutely is. But he's gonna stand over a body where he has allegations of harassment and assault, and you're gonna say because it was only harassment at the beginning, he should be allowed to skate on this? That's insane. You don't harass women in the workplace. If it's done, he should be held responsible uh, you, if he allows it to occur. Your suggestion that I think women should be allowed to, to, to be harassed is also offensive. It, there are victims here. They should have been treated in ways that are consistent with what they wanted to, to, how to be treated. We don't know what that was. And there is a difference between assault. Your original piece and the piece in the paper says he covered up an assault. He never did. It says a harassment and assault. And by the way, I didn't suggest that you think it's good to have harassment or that you're saying that's okay. What I'm saying is something. I mean, I don't even know There's what you think. Is that when a what leader what happened in this matter to be seriously considered when you then extend it beyond what's fair, nobody served. There's and a Richard, problem this, here. But you didn't let me finish. Let me just finish for a minute. I agree. I'm very sensitive to the victims. And if, they're, if they wanted that held privately, I'm very sensitive. To that. And I actually said that. My problem is, after that happened, two other people were allegedly and, assaulted and or that, harassed. And he made whichever, that public. Whichever you want to say. You're, make, but, you're but, making my case. But no, no, you're making my case. Had they not covered up the original charges of harassment and or assault, however you want to look at it, the next two couldn't Did have the occurred. Did victims that want is the that point. kept quiet or not? The, I don't know. I haven't talked then to them. If they, did, to if they did, I said if they did, I can respect that. But it, the, it's the, the future that, victims that didn't Mr. want Silver's it covered up. Mr. Silver's office wanted that confidentiality clause. And, and, and that's got to come out in the wash. But for now, yeah. for now, knowing what we know, bad as the situation is, as awful as the behaviors are, you've got to be proportional and, 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 and who you or make accusation against. Shelley did what he should have done, had like done, he he just up his butt. I just the, have one last question. what it looks like, but if that's not what happened. If there weren't more accusers that came out after the original complaint, would we ever have known that Villa Lopez harassed uh, a woman? If the settlement and the confidentiality went out, would he have would the calls for his resignation be loud enough that you, we, the people, would have heard? Put, since it was public taxpayer dollars, you put your dollars finger paid on. on the heart of the problem. There's a balance, there's a conflict between the rights of victims to be to their privacy, which we should respect, and the right of the public to know. What Shelley did is he asked Jacob, the investigative body, to help structure a policy that everybody understands. If victims want confidentiality, that ought to be respected. If that's what happened in here, Shelley did nothing wrong. We don't know that yet. Let's at least wait for a guy who's done a lot of good for a lot of people before we call we, we, we lump him in with harassers and criminals and say that he ought to resign. We don't know enough to make that judgment yet. One last question. I know where heavy is. Shelley Silver, whatever anybody thinks in regards to politics, one of the smartest um, politicians, let's say, that I know. Why he would get involved on behalf, and, and whether or not that's not termed a fair characterization, I think it is, but in behalf of Vita Lopez in this I situation, don't think he did. why he would ever want to literally muddy his hands with the likes of Vita Lopez, and if that ends up being on his political epitaph, I mean, that to me is, is almost as shocking as, as everything that has happened here. Vita Lopez, with all due respect, was never considered a white knight in Albany here. Uh, and while we may be shocked by the allegations, he's not a great guy. Why he'd get involved in that company, is it surprise you at least? I, to, to come to that conclusion, I have to agree with you that he did. I don't think we know that yet. Look, Albany is a tough place to defend for a series of political reasons mm -hmm. and some substantive. I'm, I'm not uh, going to say there isn't need for real change and real reform. There is. But when you make accusations against a human being, be sure that the facts you have justify you the conclusion of your. I think it's all going to come out. There's an independent investigation going on right now. All right. Thank you, guys. When we come back after this quick break, we will head back uh, to the campaign trail. And while everybody's focused, obviously, on the presidential race, we got some new numbers here that Andrew will break down here and some those Capitol Hill, um, uh, basically races that could shift the balance of power in both the House and the Senate. We're going to tell you which races in our region to keep an eye on for. And trust me, why Washington's watching as well. So it's.